So let's start to build the body of the engine. I have some NURBS curves here, linear or degree one curves, which are basically polygon lines. And I'll select them all and then go into my revolve options for NURBS surfaces. But here I would define that I want to output polygons directly and just the control points. And the number of segments around should be 18 and the axis for the revolve would be the z-axis. So do the revolve here, which gives us a basic shape for our, for our engine. So first I want to add some details here in the front of the engine. So I'm going to select these, um, these faces here around the engine. And because I want to filter them a few times, I want to detach the whole thing first, extract the faces, which gives me a separate polygon object for these objects here. And in the modeling toolkit, I can use the connect tool to do some, you know, intersections here. Maybe when I adjust the segments to something like three would be sufficient for me. I'll select all of the edges here. So I convert the selection and control double click the border edges so that we only have the inner edges. And then I would bevel these edges. So here we do some sort of a fraction. I want to have some facets or something like that, you know, that uh, looks a little bit more lightweight on this um, solid part here. And then I go into faces and then the next step, I want to filter out only the bigger faces. And I'm, I'm going to do that with selection constraints. Selection constraints allow me to filter something like all of the faces will be filtered here. That's why I have cut out this part. And I will switch on the geometry setting here. So let me set this to zero first. And I would increase this setting here. Now you see that the smaller ones are selected until the bigger faces are also selected. And then adjust this so that the smaller edges are, or the smaller faces are no longer selected, only the big ones here. And with this set, I will shift right mouse button, extrude these faces along the Z axis into the into the minus region, so a little bit something like this here. So in the next step, I want to extrude these little edges, these little edges here, which is a question, how do we select them? Because I don't want to go around and click all of these edges here. When I go back to my face selection, I can say I convert this to the edges and then grow the selection once. And then in the next step, I would select the selection boundary, which leaves me just with these smaller edges here, which I can then um, bevel using the bevel tool, maybe a larger bevel. And then we go back to the face selection here and do this again to just filter out the larger faces. And I will use again the bevel face to make a smaller bevel down here. And then we go again back to the faces, filter them again just the bigger ones. And then I'm going to grow this, or I have to reset my selection constraints first. I will grow this twice and then do another bevel for the top of these, um, of these, uh, you know, stiffer parts here to get another bevel. So you see the idea behind it to just add some more details to make it look more technical, this whole thing here. So in the next step, we're going to create uh, the fan blades for one of the fans. So to model a fan can be a pretty straightforward thing. If we had one fan blade, I could do a duplicate and rotate all of these fans around if I know what I'm doing. But um, to play around with the look of the whole thing, it would be nice to keep the construction history and you know go back and forth and play around with the settings and so. And that's what we want to do now. So I start to model a fan blade by using a little cube here. And in my attribute editor, I can go to the polycube settings and first adjust a certain width, a certain height of that thing. So maybe something like this here. And the depth, I don't know, maybe I'll leave it like that. And um, to bend it and to twist it around, I, I'm going to add some subdivisions here. Maybe vertically, I don't need so many. And then move this thing up so that the pivot is more or less at the bottom of the whole thing. And then I group this for mesh to pick up this group here and to, to rotate around this one. So for the fan blade itself, I will then 
add some deformations. So I'm using the nonlinear deformers here to first do a bend tool. So with the bend, I'm gonna uh, gonna rotate this around 90 degrees in this direction here. With the bend handle, I can, you know, do some bending. I see, okay, that's the wrong direction. So let's do another rotation around 90 degrees in this direction here, like so. So this is my bend now. I'm, I can bend the fan blade around this axis here. Again, we go back. I'm gonna frame the selection a little bit. And the next one would be a flare deformation. In this case, I can take these manipulators directly here to do my flare. You see the kind of deformation that is possible. I can make the fan blade a little bit wider outside and also change this one here and you know the whole behavior of this fan to make something you know a little bit bended fan blade type of thing and the last one will be a twist manipulator and you know for this one i need to bend bend it like so maybe bend this you know it should be something like this here right and with this fan blade i can now go and actually pick the group that i created before and with this, I'm going to go into my motion graphics screen setup or workspace here, and I'll create a mesh network with this object. I see it starts with a distribute node that is set to linear, and we want to set it to radial. And also, you know, change the radius a little bit and the number of blades. And you see here comes my fan. To move this around and to put it actually into the turbine, I need another node, which is a transform node so that I can take the whole thing while it is live and move it around. I'm going to create a little controller null here. And that's a little locator. You see it here in the center. And when I switch on the display handle, I can at any time when I miss the selection, I can go anytime back and take this controller or this little null node and uh, pick it and, and move it around. So this way I can move the blades in inside the turbine and go back to the distribute node and for example change the radius, you know, something like this. And if you see when you see you know the, the whole scaling here is not right, just go back to the original object here in the outliner down here, we see the original object in the group. So I can take the cube, either the cube or the group itself and, you know, change the scaling just so. And when I make it visible, I can still go around and, you know, change um, any of these manipulators here. For example, the twist handle, when I go back to the manipulator, I can change the twist of my of my fan blades, something like this. Maybe it should be the other way around, right? So we wanna do something more like this here. And to have more of these fan blades uh, behind each other, I'd simply take this, make a duplicate, and then I can move this in the back. So that's my iteration for the, for the fan blades here. So that's a very easy thing. So to remove this whole construction history, I can shift alt D on this object here and then remove all of these. No problem. And in the mesh editor, I don't need this network anymore so I can completely remove it. So these are the fan blades, pretty easy, straightforward thing. And the next will be some decoration for the body of the turbine. So for the decoration of the turbine I have, I'm going to switch back to the modeling standard layout here to my workspace and I'll switch on this uh, layer here, this display layer. And you see, I have some, I have extracted some parts, some, you know, technically looking parts from, from other models. And I will start using these to decorate the, the body of the whole, of the whole turbine. Here's one group that I can use to place it and yeah i have to go back to the motion graphics setting and create a mesh network for this one here and again you know whenever you have to set these settings here for the distribute node going from linear to a radial with a certain radius etc etc you have to do this over and over for all of these parts that you want to distribute around the turbine it's a good idea once you have set everything to create such a preset so this might be out of the 
recording here. So I'm taking this preset here and replace the settings. You see it switches to radial, has a certain radius already and, and all of these settings can be done in a single click. So that's much easier. Um, again, there could be also a hotkey to create this transform thing. So let's do that manually. Switch on the display handle to be able to, to get back to the selection here. So I'm going to place these objects Somewhere here, you see the radius is not okay. Let's go back to the distribute node, move this out a little bit, place it properly. So let's let's have a look, a closer look if we are if the radius is okay. Something like this should be should be okay. So and you know some pieces belong more or less together. So later I find out maybe that these two pieces here would also be a good idea to include in this group. So I can do the same thing. Of course I can make a mesh network, change distribute, make a transform, yada yada yada. But I can also when I move these back to their zero position what I can also do is to include these into the group that I have already. So you see that when as soon as I create such a mesh network, it will create an empty, uh, you know, an, a group that is hidden. So I can move these objects into the group. But you see they don't show up here. So that's it's not updating for some reason. Uh, actually, the reason is it's clear it's not watching this group all the time. I can go into the mesh and pick the mesh repro node. This mesh repro node contains this group here. And when you right mouse button on the group, you can do a refresh. Now watch this region here. When I do the refresh, you see that all of these pieces would show up suddenly. So that way you can, you know, still edit it and still add to the whole, uh, to the whole thing by regrouping and adding things. Also, you can drop other objects into here and, you know, maybe a switch with an ID node, switch different ones into, into the display. So the next one here will be a little bit more difficult. So when, when we look at this object here or this bunch of objects, you see it's not only it has a, it has a very difficult position in space, it's rotated slightly. That's a, that's a little problem. And also the pivots are all right. So all of these pieces are separate. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to group them all together. So control G and the, the new group, of course, has its pivot in the center. And one thing that I can do to move it into the correct position, so correct position would be maybe in the center of this round structure here. So what I can do is to select one of the edges, shift right mouse button and fill that hole. Now we have an extra polygon here that we can use to, um, to place the pivot. So I am hit the D key to be in the pivot mode and now I can take this pivot here and place it in the center. I don't want to align it actually. I want to just position the pivot. So here's my pivot. And if you forgot to align with this face, it would have been easy, but I can also, you know, just orient the whole pivot by clicking one of these edges here. So, so that's an, that's an easy way to do this. I can also try the align from here would also, you know, that gives me a different orientation for the whole pivot. I don't like that. I like this one here with the Z axis being straight. And uh, I just want to rotate around so the Y axis points upward. So I'm holding the J key for snapping and then rotate this around in, you know, in steps so that now the, the Y axis is straight. Hit the D key again. And when I look for now for my transforms, you see that it's all zero, zero, zero. Even if my object is not in the zero position and also there is no rotation showing up. So I don't know exactly which rotation it is. In the modify menu, you will find bake pivot. Bake pivot looks at the current pivot and bakes it back to the transformation. So in the uh, channel box, I, for instance, I can set it to 000, zero, zero and remove this 10 degree rotation that we have. So now we have a straight object and we can use the mesh network, a new mesh network to rotate around. You know this game here, go to the distribute, use the preset to have some initial settings here for the rotation and uh, add a transform node with a custom locator. And then we can use this to move it back there. So how, let's have a look how the position is. 
right so we do something like this here and i also would like to rotate the whole thing i can use my um my rotation manip uh, my manipulator here to do this and let's say we want to have 10 degrees like before is a good hint so that's in the middle between the other between the other two objects so we are pretty good with the first set of objects the next thing would be this blade here that is uh, used to focus the beam of the engine um, we can we can place that there and some other parts so there are some other parts here let me hide these ones here we have some other parts here that we can uh, we can now place which will happen in the next step so let's have a look at some other decorations here i have a bunch of cable parts that i extracted from another model and this is this thing here so it's a whole bunch of objects maybe i move them up a little bit it's a whole bunch of objects that are just uh, you know mimicking simple cables and these cables are even slightly bent and i want to move them between these objects here so it's actually something that goes around the whole thing and, uh, and looks a little bit like wiring heavy wiring so let me undo these two uh, or three um uh, sets here so if you want to see what all of the objects are of course you can take them all individually and spread them out like i just did there's a there's a neat little trick in maya 2017 update 3 that you can use to do exactly that so let's say we want to you know each of these individual 19 or 18 pieces here i need my outliner so each of these 18 pieces here should be moved by a certain amount upwards uh, and we can do that in, in update three with what we call dash scripting. So you select a channel or some channels from the channel box and then alt right mouse button and you get a little window to enter an expression. And this is the dash scripting. There's a certain set of functions. At the moment we have four functions in there, which includes randomness. You can shift keyframes, for example, if you have a bunch of animated objects and want to randomly shift their keyframes, that it would be possible. And I'm gonna use the linear which is l and then open the brackets and then include like we have 18 pieces times i don't know how many use units eight units upwards and then close the brackets so with this expression here this one happens you see that all of these cable parts will be spread out upwards so that i can clearly see what the parts are you know look for duplicates maybe rotate some of them and and you know you get the idea so I'll undo that i don't need them in a spread out fashion i want to open the mesh editor and create a new mesh network and with this new network it's again the same thing here with the uh, with the distribute node let's use the preset to make it faster so now it's rotated around we need again this uh, this transform node to position it properly and now i can move this back here you see the radius is not so bad we need to rotate it slightly because um you know we have a we have some sort of an offset here so rotate this like so and unfortunately mesh is only showing the first of these objects here so maybe i'll in, uh, increase the radius slightly like so so we have 18 objects but it's only showing the first one it's the same wire around the whole engine which is quite boring so i'll add a, a so-called id node with the id node i can say you know i want to switch between all of the objects that i had selected which in this case is 18 it, it recognizes that number and you will find these 18 objects here in the repro node here are my 18 objects and with the id node i can not only linearly switch between one or the other i can also do a random which would be cool in this in this place here because with randomness i can say okay maybe the distribution here on this side is not nice let's, let's take another random number and you know different random uh, distributions maybe this one here looks nice and then i can go back to the locator and move it a little bit to the middle uh, to make it look nicer so that's an easy way if you have several parts that you want to place on the surface of your turbine that looks good already